Okay, guys, this is uh, this is a video on how I converted the Nexstar uh, 46 to a uh, to an electric. Um, I looked on the internet and typed in Nexstar electric uh, conversion or uh, Nexstar conversion, and I found a, a couple of videos that weren't very long. I applaud his efforts there, but I find it. Folks want to know some of the details of, uh, of what happened during the conversion, and that, that's pretty much what I was looking for. But uh, here goes. Uh, one of the first thing I did, I cut the cheeks off of the electric. Uh, uh, pardon me, of the uh, of the 46, and I I bought a replacement cowl for the Nexstar EP. And if you know the EP, uh, this stripe right here is blue. I just took some red electrical tape and uh, and with an exacto knife trimmed it up and uh, looks real nice there. Uh, slides on and uh, and there you have it, man. Looks real good. Uh, at least I thought it did anyway. Um, one of the things that I needed to do was to um, was of course to mount the engine. And uh, I used uh, brass tubing as spacers, pushing the engine forward so that it reached out uh, far enough that it could, uh, you know, of course the, the uh, spinner could clear the cowling. And um, that was, I have to say, that was a bit of a chore for me. I'd never done that before, but uh, it, uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. One of the things that... Uh, uh, well, I should say it this way: we've got a we've got a guy at the hobby shop that's very knowledgeable. One of the things he uh, he told me to do was to put the washers, flat washers, uh, behind the spacers so that whenever you tighten it up, uh, tighten up the screws, it doesn't cut into your firewall. That was good information there. I probably wouldn't have done that. But uh, one another guy in the club said that uh, one of the things that he found about the next star was the fact that it flew to the right, yawed hard to the right. So I went in here and right here you can see these two flat washers that I put on the down and right uh, spacer which would push this engine kind of up and to the left. Uh, I've flown this model uh, a numerous number of times. I think I've got six flights on it now. I'm going through the post flight or post maiden inspection to see that all the screws are tightened and everything and uh, I have to tell you, it flies straight down the runway, takes off beautifully. Uh, some other things that I had to do, as you can see, the uh, the hood and the windshield I've cut away because I couldn't get in here and put these T-nuts back here. Uh, I, I pondered several days on how to do that, and I just I couldn't get past it. But I will go back on with um, the rare earth magnets, and that should take care of it. You can get these rare earth magnets. I got these down at, uh, at Harbor Freight. Uh, it's a pack of 10 rare earth magnets, and them puppies are strong. <clears throat> you can get a pack of 10 of them for, I think, like $2.99. Um, let's see what else we did here. Um, well, this is going into the motor. That was one of my first selections. I went with a Turnigy uh, 5065 with a 400 kV. And I'm telling you, that motor's got some pull. I have not hit a hat. Well, I did a bench test on a full throttle, and it's got serious pull. In my actual flights, I have not needed anything more than three-quarter throttle. So I'm real pleased with that. And I married it with the ICE 100 uh, Castle Creations uh, speed controller with a BEC. Uh, it tucks nicely. I Velcroed it on the inside wall of the, uh, of the forward section. The, I have an AR500 receiver, uh, Spectrum receiver, uh, Velcroed high on the fuselage there so I can get easy access to... Um, uh, plugging in the aileron uh, lead and then uh, another thing I did I put a floor <clears throat> in the forward section where the gas tank normally would go and uh, this allows me to uh, to put the uh, <coughs> excuse me put the uh, the battery in here you see I've velcroed it to the floor and it balances out real nicely like that um, I use a Turnigy 500 milliamp 6 cell and uh, it really does well. I've gotten 12 minute flights and still got, uh, well I only used 30% of the battery uh, 
that still had 77% left. Those of you who know the Nexstar know there's a rubber plate that goes right here. Here's the rubber plate. Uh, there is a uh, little threaded grommet that inserts right here. I, I could not get my wing bolt to line up with the grommet inside, so I tossed that and uh, went with a piece of hardwood here, and I, I moved the uh, hole back to line it up, and this works really great. Uh, I put the threaded grommet, uh, epoxied it in from the bottom side so I didn't have to tap the uh, the wood there. Uh, let me see here. <clears throat> I use a 1410 prop and an e spinner, um, which those of you know, at the back plate on the e spinner is slotted, so it helps move air. Helps move air through uh, the firewall hole here, uh, through the the section, through the fuselage, and if I can get this up here, the hole in the back right there was where the anti crash. Uh, I was located. <coughs> Excuse me, and that allows the air to flow through. Uh, all in all, it's an awesome plane. Uh, it was a fun conversion. And um, if any of you are trying or thinking about converting this, I welcome you to give me a call. <coughs> I'll be happy to offer any suggestions or you know, shoot me a line on YouTube or whatever. There. That's about it, guys. Well, that's all. Uh, I'm going to take it out after I go through the post maiden inspection here. Got things I want to make sure about, but um, I'll try to get you all some flight footage. Uh, have a good evening. Ooh, you heard that? Yeah, that was a prop strike on that rubber mat. We'll do it again here in just a second. Come on.